Hi guys. How is everybody tonight? Good. I'm so, 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 so excited to have the beautiful Amanda Dewey as our um, guest speaker tonight. Um, Amanda is, oh, how many stars are you now? I don't even know. Five star, three star, one star, and one star. <laughs> okay, tell us that again. Because I was going to say five star, but I know it's more than that. So yeah, five star, three star, one star, and one star. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten combined. Uh, okay, so she's um, an elite coach, and she—I can't even like give you the most amazing introduction that you deserve. I feel like I, I feel like I'm on the spot. Um, She's beach body coach and elite five star, three star, one star, one star, one star, many, many star. <laughs> um, and she's a master trainer and she is one of my best friends mm -hmm. and my mentor. And what else am I missing? Beautiful mother of three children and wife to a fabulously awesome guy and she just built her dream home because of beach body and she's a pio instructor and what am i missing master trainer master yeah. trainer i said yeah you're good that's what am I missing? What else am I missing? Just enough <laughs> you stop <laughs> she's pretty much amazing and um I've, i'm hoping that you guys are all familiar with amanda and have um taken in her story at some point on your journey here. If you haven't, you need to, because she's just um, super inspirational and a fabulous leader. We've been friends for many, 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 many years. And one thing I admire most about Amanda is that she is able to juggle like a crazy busy life. And she does so very well. And a big reason that she's able to do so is because she time blocks. And I know that a struggle that a lot of us have is how do I juggle everything that I have going on all the time? And so Amanda's going to just shed some light on that. And so we asked you to do a little bit of homework and come prepared for the call tonight. And I know everybody's time is precious. So Amanda, I'm sorry for my rambling introduction that probably didn't give you the justice that you deserve. So. No, you're good. You're good. Thank you for being on. Yeah. I, lo I always love being on your team call because you have just attracted the most beautiful um, and intelligent group of women to, um, of course, you attract what you are. So that's no surprise at all. But I do have a lot for you guys. And I will tell you something that I struggle with is is going slow enough to make sure you explain and I tend to go off on tangents so I'm gonna work really hard to make it very very clear and I really 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 need you to wave your arms at me if I lose you or to type in the chat box and let me know that you're lost or that you need a clarification okay but where we need to start with time blocking is understanding why we need it um, I, I, it's something that comes very, 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 very natural to me. I don't know why. I, I couldn't explain like if there was a moment or an experience I had when I was young. I don't know why, but it's come very natural to me. And I was sharing with Jess this morning, actually, um, I, that I was chatting with my husband a few days ago, and he is always amazed at all the things that I did while I was in middle school, high school, and college too, actually. Um, because I was in so many extracurricular activities, and then I always worked. I, I always had a job, whether it was my own little side business, like teaching piano lessons to kids, or working at the nursing home, or, or working at the strawberry patch. Like, I had all these jobs, but then I was also in, um, a lot of you are from smaller towns, so it's, I think it's more common when you're from a really small town, but big cities too. I was in choir, and, and jazz band, and, and, um, Oh, what's all the other bands called? Um, there's all these other bands. There's like concert band and, and jazz band and concert choir and then show choir and cheerleading and dance team and color guard and all these other things. And I had all these other jobs. And I, my, when I look back, oh, I youth development, just all these different things. I could give you a list of like 30 miles long of all the different things I was involved in. And I look back and I never felt busy and I never felt overwhelmed, ever. 
I was, you know, and I got good grades. I didn't have to study very hard, but I got good grades and I never felt overwhelmed. And we were talking about that. He's like, how do you think you did that? And I'm like, I don't know, probably the same way I did it now. I just knew what I had to do each day and I just did that and I didn't worry about anything else. And I think that that's going to be a big part of why you need to understand why you need time blocking is that what it allows you to do, because I know that you're all in this business because you want freedom. Yes? Can I get an amen? You want freedom. That's why you're here. And you're thinking right now. I know what you're thinking. You're going to go, Amanda, I don't want to time block because that's going to lock me into doing shit I don't want to do. And I'm here to tell you it's not. It's not at all. In fact, the goal that you're going to write at the top of your page, you just, you have a note taking page right now and you also have your, whatever you're going to time block on, whatever you're taking notes on, the number one goal of time blocking is to have a lot of blank space. That's the goal. My goal with time blocking for you is to make you realize you have a crap ton of extra time in your day. I don't care how much you do. Listen, I know that we're all busy. Some of you still have full-time jobs. I'm just going to use myself as an example. I'm a master trainer for Beachbody. That means that on weekends, I go and I travel and I certify people. It's not just a one day thing. I spend a half a day prepping for it and another half a day doing paperwork to finish that up. I'm a full-time beach body coach, meaning I work probably at least two to four hours a day, sometimes more on my beach body business. I have three kids. I'm also a group fitness instructor. So I teach classes outside of the home at the gym during the week. You get it. We all have a lot going on. Yes or yes. And I will tell you, my calendar is mostly white space. And that's because with time blocking, I'm, I've learned how to manage it. And I never stress out during that white space because I know that all the other stuff is taken care of because there's a block for it. Are you with me? Are you excited to time block and give yourself tons of free time? Because that's what I'm going to give you. Okay? And if your time block, when we're done with this, is color-coded back to back to back to back to back, we're gonna have some extra work for you to do after this call. Because guess who's having too many servings on the 21 day fix? You are, and you need a diet. We are gonna 21 day fix your calendar and you're gonna to have to remove some stuff. Okay, so it's really gonna be, um, I hope you have some colored markers, some colored pens, some colored whatever if you're doing this on paper. Just a quick note, how many of you are doing it on paper? Raise your hands and wave at me, paper friends. Wonderful. Lots of you. Good. I assume the other half of you are doing it digitally somehow, whether it's iCal, Google Cal, Evernote, etc. Yes, hands? Somebody doing something different than what I just said. Those are pretty much your only two options, yes? Anybody doing anything different than that? Good deal. All right. I'm doing a lot of lecturing before I'm making you work. You're excited about time blocks now. Now you want to do them. But we still can't start time blocking because there's something we have to know first. And that is, what are our priorities? It's going to be very, very, very easy to make choices about your schedule when you know what your priorities are. You are the only person that can answer that question. Your number one priority may be your beach body business. Your number one priority may be your kids. Your number one priority may be your marriage, your faith. It could be a bazillion things. You don't have to say it out loud tonight, but you need to know in your heart of hearts what your answer is, not what you're supposed to say, because everybody knows you're supposed to say mom and wife or faith or something like that. Now what you're supposed to say, what are your priorities today? And then own that crap and be okay with it. All right? So we're not going to go over priorities and all that stuff. I hope that you're doing the 21 or the 30 day push. Um, if you are, you're probably pretty familiar with what your priorities are. Also, just a small teeny tiny lecture about priority. If your priority is your family, you also have to know that there are multiple ways to serve your family. Yes or yes. Unless you are a single mother, and even if you're a single mother, I'm going to challenge you on that because you probably have other people in your life that are important too. You are not the only person that can do things for your family. Okay, you're going to have to prioritize what's most important for you to do for your family and what other people can do for your family, including your husband, who's a very capable man. Do you know that he used to get dressed and make choices all by himself before he married you? What? He used to know how to go to the grocery store and do laundry and 
drive and like dress himself, all kinds of crazy things. I know, I know. So you have to keep these things in mind, okay? We're gonna have to let go of a little bit of control and I promise you that at the end of the day, you'll be happier. So you know your priorities. Step number one, are you ready? Step number one only applies to my friends that have a J-O-B outside of Beachbody. If you have a job outside of Beachbody right now, I want you to take a black, black marker, color, or if you're on um, a digital, I, sometimes iCal doesn't give you color choices, I don't think, but if you're on something like Evernote or Asana, I think it does, black is gonna be your J-O-B. You're gonna have to black out your work hours. Now, if you're doing it on paper, I just want it to be a square. I don't want it colored in. Why? Because sometimes at your J-O-B, you can do other things. Shh. Shh. Okay. So just a black square around the J-O-B hours. Guess what? Include your commute. If you commute, you have to include it. So the second you walk out your front door, your J-O-B starts. The second you get back home inside your door, your J-O-B stops. Okay, it's just an outline though. Okay, give me a good thumbs up once you're ready. And every, just keep that thumb up until, until we've got all the screens. Okay, great, thank you. I think we're all good. Step number two. Oh, doesn't this feel great? Some of you still have white space. Score. Yeah. All right. Step number two. These are going to be red. Your workouts. Guess what? Your beach body coaches. And if you didn't know this already, you must work out every day. Doesn't have to be seven days a week, but take your red and put a square around the 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your workout of when you work out every day. Yes, it may be different some days. And yes, you're locked into that, whatever you put down right now. That's your locked in time. Okay. That square can be filled in if you'd like, because guess what? Should you be Facebooking, answering phone calls, Typing up emails, should you be doing those things while you're exercising? Probably not so much. Okay, so that box can actually be colored in, and it, like I said, it's gonna be 30 minutes to an hour, right? Be very aware as you're filling these in, ladies. Be very aware of not putting things back to back. Be very aware. Yes, use airplane mode on the phone. But be very aware that you're not scheduling your things back to back. Because guess what you have to do sometimes? Sometimes you have to pee. Sometimes you have to change clothes. Sometimes you have to just like walk to the coffee maker and make another pot of coffee. Okay, there are things that happen where you need to leave those cracks in your day. Okay, so be weary, leery of posting things back to back. Are we all good with our workouts? Awesome. You know when all your workouts are going to happen this week. Awesome. All right, next up. This, this, is gonna, this is one of those things that's going to fluctuate week to week, probably. What appointments do you have coming up this week? Those are going to be in blue. Blue is going to be appointments. Appointments can be dentist, doctor, hair, nails, uh, kids, principal's office, teachers meetings and in this particular case guys I'm gonna go with KPI calls too I don't know how many of you are doing KPIs. some of you are doing KPIs with me so you know what I'm talking about others of you appointments where you're you're getting on the phone and you know you have a scheduled phone call with a person whether it's Beachbody or not um, Ashley let me mute you. go ahead okay so I'm sorry, this is my first like video thing, but my sure. question is, I'm a social worker. Uh-huh. So when we are blacking out our time of day, uh-huh, my time of day is different every day. Yeah. So like yesterday, I worked on a Saturday 
from 9 a.m. to 1.30. So any day I can get a call to remove children, to do anything. So how do I do that? Okay, do you know, uh, do you have any set hours whatsoever? Or are you 100% on call? Supposedly I was hired from 8 to 4.30. Okay. But ultimately I have a work phone and if I don't answer my work phone, law enforcement will show up at my house. Yeah, so you're just one of those special ex exceptions where your time block is gonna be, this is my goal every day. Okay, okay. this is my goal every day. And when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna stay on track as long as you can yes. Yes. until you can't anymore. Okay, I'm gonna be right. getting in the background. But you're gonna, until you can't anymore. And then when life throws, things at you, you're gonna learn how to adjust your blocks, okay? So say you had something booked in the afternoon and you get a call and you have, you have to do a work thing. Okay, let's just say you lost four hours of your day. All right, I'm assuming, do you get to make up that, like, because my mom was a social worker too, you can just nod your head yes or no. If you hit 40 hours by Thursday, can you take Friday off? If you don't get any phone calls. On Friday, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna make, you're gonna move things over to Friday or whenever. You're, so yours is gonna be a little flexy, but you're gonna still keep your boxes. You're just gonna have like rotating boxes. So you may want to do a whiteboard with 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 literally with white magnets, okay? And you may want to be able to move your magnets. All right. So for and you're just the exception to the rule. Sorry, I muted you. Hold on. That's why I work out in the morning, Amanda. Yeah, because if you in wait, it won't happen. Yep. Nobody will call me at 6 a.m. Well, some people will. Again, well, my mom was a social worker. I know these things. <laughs> All right. So you're just, you're just going to have to be a little bit more flexible than the rest. But we'll, you, it'll still work for you, I promise. Okay, so appointments. Are, have, do you feel like you've got most of your appointments in for the week? Basically, appointments is any time you have told someone else, I'm going to be there. Right? Those are in blue. Thumbs up if we're good and you're still with me. Awesome. Next up, weekly commitments. Now, to all my beach body coaches, that's gonna be power hour one and power hour two. Those are weekly commitments. Okay, you're committing to do that every day. So those are also gonna be in red. I want everything that has anything to do with Beach Buddy to be in red. So power hour one, when does it happen? Power hour two, when does it happen? If they are back to back, I still wanna put you 15 minute breaks in between. Uh, Jess, go ahead. Um, some, of our, some of our coaches are, are new and, are pro and probably are not putting in two hours a day. Suggestions. Um, so, they're gonna to have to do power hour one. Do they know the two power hours? I mean, they may not know it off the top of their head, but do they have access mm -hmm. to that list? No? I um, made one, but I haven't put it in our Okay, so whatever you're, so for now, all I'm gonna say then is each body hours. Just put them in, whatever out, if you're working an hour a day, then put it where it goes. If you're working two hours a day, put it where it goes. Okay, so for now, your beach body hours are in red. So go ahead and fill those in. Jess can give you more details later on if you're like, oh, wait a second, what is power hour one and two? She can tell you that later, that's another call. What you do in there, that's for later. But for right now, schedule your beach body hours. It's a business, you got business hours. So put it out there, okay? Okay, the next, are we, okay, are we, are we good-ish? I see still lots of heads down. We good? I'm gonna give just a couple more seconds. All right, your next step is gonna take a little bit of internal reflection and this one's probably gonna take a little bit more time for you to really think through. Okay, first let me tell you what's gonna go in the next box. The next box are gonna be yellows. 
kind of like cards, take them or leave them. Okay, they're yellows. Yellows are going to be recurring events, special events, kid activities, extracurricular activities, fun stuff, okay? Listen to my speech. You, many, many, many of you have capable partners. Use them. I know that you want to be at every little dance, you know, practice and every, you know, gymnastics rehearsal and every single thing. That is not the only way to serve your family. If it is in line with your priorities to serve your family by building this business, know that there are certain things other people can do. Are you with me? Nobody else can date your spouse. I don't think. Um, you know, maybe for, for me, my rule is nobody else uh, says goodbye to my kids in the morning and nobody else greets them when they come in the door. That's irreplaceable for me. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, I am the one who sees them first when they come home and sees them out the door. That's, that's my irreplaceable. Now for me, does my kid who's in gymnastics for six hours a week and I can't even see him because the gymnastics gym is shaped like an L, do I need to sit there for two and a half hours? I don't. That's, that's my replaceable. I give myself hours there because there are other things for me that are more important. Are you seeing where I'm going? You're just gonna have to make choices about what you must do versus what others can do, okay? And others meaning, that could be people that are not paid. Your children can put away laundry. They can be taught to do that. It may not be perfect, and it might not be like June Cleaver done, but is it done? Can you sacrifice having it perfect for having it done? Ask yourselves these kind of questions as you schedule special events, recurring events, kids' activities, and extracurriculars. These are all yellows. Other recurring events might be um, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, book clubs, um, date night with the spouse, uh, a lot of different things like that. Start putting those yellows into your schedule. And if you start to see that yellows are taking over your schedule, you might need to back that train up and see what yellows you can assign. If it's a yellow that can be assigned to someone else, maybe just put the box there so that you know that it's happening. We're moms, we gotta know where our kids need to be, but it's open so that you could fill it with something else. Maybe you're like, no, I really do have to be at gymnastics for two and a half hours. It's yellow and it's two and a half hours. But maybe at gymnastics, there's Wi-Fi and you can bring your laptop and your headphones and you can turn it into a red. Are you following me? Okay, so it's about making the most of your time you can. All of my commuters, now that with your J-O-B, you're gonna put in your commute a red because it's going to be personal development time. You're gonna stop listening to Ryan Seacrest, Ryan's Roses on the way to work in the morning. <laughs> you're gonna stop listening to 90s on 9 on the way home. And instead, you're gonna listen to a good book on audio in your car. Are you with me still? You got your yellows in? And then also, you have to ask yourself, what yellows are you willing to sacrifice? Um, I had to give up a long-term book club that I was in because it was just, it was, it was taking away my energy and my ability to stick to the power hours that were really important, like the red and the blue and all those other things. Um, I had to sacrifice going out sometimes with, with friends just for random dinners, you know, like random girls get togethers. Those are, things are so, so super important to me. But now if I want to do that, I ask my coach friends to do it because you know what? We have more in common and we end up having more to talk about because I can only talk about how annoying someone else's husband is for so long before I'm like, okay, <sighs> let's just move on. Are you still with me? Now, is there anything you think didn't fit in any of those blocks? Do you have any lingering like, oh, I'm, I, I totally didn't do that? Okay, now you've got purple. Purple 
just like fruits on the, on the, on the 21 day fix are going to be your sweet times. Those are for you, for you and you alone. Every single human on this planet needs downtime. We all need different amounts of downtime and what we do with our downtime is our own business. So some of us might read us weekly and people while watching the Kardashians and that is okay. It is okay if I do it for one hour and that is my downtime. Where it becomes counterproductive is when we do it for four hours while drinking a bottle of wine and it goes on forever and ever and ever. Do you understand the difference? One hour, that's me time. Four hours plus a bottle of wine, not so much me time anymore. Yes or yes? Okay, so start filling in your purples. You, my, my goal is that you have purple in there every day. There should be a little bit of purple in your life every day. Whether it's 30 minutes in the bathroom alone, <laughs> or it's 30 minutes of, of a show that you like to watch at the end of the day, or maybe it's Walking Dead on Sunday nights at nine. How many of you are missing Walking Dead right now, anybody? No, I'm the only Walking Dead fan. Okay. Ah, zombies. Okay. Um, now, do you still have white space? I need to know. Do you still have white space? Raise your hand if you've got some white space. Good, because guess what goes in the white space? Life. Free time. I want you to have lots of white space. That's your time to like float around on Pinterest, play toys with your kids, go to the park, do whatever you want, cook dinner, meal prep, there's a grocery stores, whatever. If that stuff wasn't already on your list, it can be, it doesn't have to be. Do you see what I'm saying? So the more white space you have, the better, because that's your flex time. Ashley, your white space is gonna be incredibly important, because that's where, as uh, as your J-O-B, that black moving magnet moves around, you're going to have to, anytime that overlaps into something else, you're going to have to take that time block and put it in white space. Yeah. Good. How do you feel looking at one week's worth of work? Do you feel a little less overwhelmed? Do you see how much free time you have? Seriously, look at that. Look at how much free time you have. Of course it's going to get filled because time just does. But if you just put your head down and did what you needed to do when you said you were going to do it, look at how much free time you have left every day. You with me? Yeah, all right, questions. I'm gonna look at chat. Airplane mode is going to be super duper important for um, anytime you're you're doing work, workouts, um, anytime basically you're working on a project. I have a lot of creative hours in the afternoons, and I need to turn my phone off for creative hour in the afternoon. Um, okay, are you type or raise your hand? Either one. Time blocking. You just you stab it all down. You're just pros now. Go ahead, Jess. Okay, you know I'm gonna have questions. Good. Um, first of all, when do you, because each week may vary. Yes. Correct. So, because I mean, my weeks are very similar, but they're not all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So, when do you sit down and block out your week? So, great question. Um, and this is, this is something that is gonna evolve for you guys too. So, for all my paper friends, like we just did this on Sunday night. So I would do it again next Sunday night and I would have your previous weeks there to look at and reference. And then you'd have the week ahead as well. Like you would know, like, um, like maybe have it in some kind of flip binder. So as things come up for your next week, you can already start filling in appointments and things like that. Of course, if you're digital, it's super easy. Mine's on my iPhone. So, and, and that I only use iCal only because I've been time blocking literally for probably 17 years of my life, literally 17 years, I can look at my iCal and you're, you, if you looked at it, you'd be like, holy crap, she does nothing. I know. It's because I, I, I know so much of it in my head that there's a lot of it that's not on there. 
Um, for me, it's mostly appointments and uh, for me, it's mostly appointments and like ha the only have to is because I know my time blocks so well. Um, so I would do Sunday. I would just for now do Sunday nights. Okay. And if um, another thing I, I really suggest is meeting with your spouse on Sunday night too, and then coinciding your schedule. So like Bill and I will literally sit and we do, we just happen to do ours on Tuesdays. But Tuesdays we'll sit down and we'll go like I'll look at my week on my like we're both on our phones. I'm looking at my week and I'll be like, oh hey, um, Friday is uh, Austin has an orthodontic appointment and it happens at two. And then I would just say to him, normally at two in my time block, that's when I'm having my training hour for Beachbody. So it would be awesome if you were free at two. And and he'll be like, I, I know he's scheduled, so I know he's free at two. He'd be like, Yep, I can go bring Roman to or Austin the orthodontist at two. And then he'll he'll turn around and say, But will I be back in time to go work out with my trainer at five thirty? And I'll say, Yep, that's not a problem. Cause I knew that that was coming next. Right. Cause it's already in there. And, and we just go back and forth there or like, you know, Friday, Hey, just FYI, I'm going to be at the kids Valentine's party at school. So, you know, don't plan anything cause I'm going to need you to be with Ainsley. Right. Do you see where I'm going? You just coincide schedules with the partner, let them know anything unusual in the schedule or anywhere where you're going to ask them to step in. And say, hey, I know I'm normally home on Wednesday nights, but I'm going to do this or whatever. We good? And then always letting them know why, you know? I mean, Bill doesn't ask anymore. He knows. But, I mean, if your partner's still not necessarily 100% on board, you know, me doing X is going to turn into Y, which will create Z, right? Saturday morning, teaching a pile live class in my house. I don't have to explain to Bill anymore what that does, but if you're like, if your husband's like, what, why does it, what does that have to do with Beachbody? You don't need to take a stupid class. Um, yes, I do. And this is why, you know, just helping them explain it. See that turned into a tangent, but I hope that answered your question. It totally did. And eventually, I as, well, just one last finishing thing for my paper yeah. friends, eventually, once you're really used to doing it on paper, you'll start the transition to the iCal or to online where you can set up recurring events. So as Jess said, there are some things that are recurring. There are some things that are just going to happen every week and you can set them up on your iCal as recurring and it's really easy to do that and then, it, and then you can modify them as needed. There's the, you can put them in weekly, bi-weekly, annually, monthly, whatever, and uh, using it digitally gets to be really, really easy so you have those recurring events. Go ahead. Oh, no, I didn't want to cut you off. Um, my next question is more of a, well, just if, just if you could give us some sage wisdom and advice just on how important it is to when you're in your, like say you're in your um, appointment time or extracurricular time to not be a slave to your to your phone and to not feel like you need to be mm -hmm. checking your groups constantly or responding to people's messages about their Shakeology or this coach you really thought was going to sign up and they've got a question about a challenge pack and how do you balance, how do you balance sticking to your time blocks? Does that make sense? Am I yeah. making sense? The more you do it, the more trust you have in the process. Right now, I'd be willing to bet if you're not time blocking, how you feel every day is, oh my God, I sure hope I get my workout done. Oh, I mean, I better make it to the grocery store. Oh, I better, I hope I get my power hour in. Oh, I might get to shower. Eee! And your brain literally does that squirrel all day long. Am I right? When yes. you time block, you don't do that. Like I wake up and I'm like, I know I wake up, I walk to my coffee pot, I get coffee and I sit down in front of my desk. I know the first thing I do every day is my power hour. I know this. It for me, it happens first. Then I get up, I stretch, I maybe go to the bathroom, maybe make another coffee, maybe, or just get water. Whatever, whatever I do, I sit back down and I have my next power hour, which takes 45 minutes. I finish that, I get up, and then some days I go teach, some days I work out, um, some days you know, whatever, I, I may have an appointment, whatever, whatever the next thing is, but I'm never worried about getting my work done because I know that I'll do it because I stick to my time box. I'm married to them. 
they're not gonna not happen. I also know that if, for example, today, I was up at 5.30 a.m., I was at a cert all day, speaking all day, working out all day, um, came home, I had nothing scheduled between now and then, trust me. And I literally laid like this on a chair in the living room until 8.30. Like, like totally laid out. Like kids crawling, animals crawling, not moving, okay? 8.30, I get up, get refreshed, recheck my notes. I'm ready to go for tonight's call because I was already prepared for it. I had everything planned. Um, but I also know that normally I would wake up at 6 a.m. on Monday morning and start that routine that I just mentioned to you guys. Are you still with me? Yes or yes? I, I know that I'm not doing that tomorrow. Tomorrow, I get to sleep till I wake up. And that power hour will move to my creative hour in the afternoon. So power hour number one will happen when I get up. Power hour number two will just shift to a white space later in the day. Okay, so I'm not going to stress out about it because I know it's going to happen because I know how much free time is in there. I think I'm, this is a really long roundabout way to answer your question, but my point is the better you become at time blocking, the more you realize you don't have to be a slave to your phone because there's no like, I don't know if I'm going to get my work out. I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know. It just, blah, blah, blah. because, and you guys all know, I'm because I'm not going to tell them the story, but you all know the professor puts in the jar of sand or whatever, right? And it's full, yes? But if you do it the opposite way, you put in rocks and then you put in pebbles and then you put in sand, you fit a lot more in the jar, yes or yes? You're all with me, you've all heard the story. Time blocking is the exact same thing. Your blocks are your rocks, okay? Little things are like, you know, like, your pebbles are gonna happen all the time. Those are errands, groceries, trips with the kids, little, you know, little things here and there. That's your pebbles. And then sand is gonna be like, you know, emergency room or weird stuff and just all the other stuff that goes on. Checking Facebook mindlessly for an hour and a half. The watching The Walking Dead, whatever that is. That's all gonna happen anyways. So instead of worrying and like rolling around on Facebook without a plan and like all of a sudden it's like 9 p.m. and you're like, oh my God, I didn't do anything today. I suck. Instead, you've done all the important things. And if you wanna roll around on Facebook for an hour before you go to bed, so be it. Fine, do that. But when you wake up in the morning and you start your next day, you just, you just have, I guess, it's almost like a faith thing. Like you have faith. Like I know that I'm gonna get my stuff done because I know that there's a block for that. And I don't stress out when I'm hanging out with the kids like tomorrow at 10 a.m. every week. Play date with two other little girls and another mom friend of mine who's a coach. Every week, Monday morning, I know this, 10 o'clock. My phone goes down, it goes in my purse, it stays far, far, far away from me. I don't keep it anywhere near me. A lot of times I leave it in the car, okay? And then we play until it's like, oh, my tummy says it's lunchtime, and then we leave. And then I look at my phone and I'm like, oh, wow, look at that stuff. Okay, good, later, because I know that at one, when I put Ainsley down for a nap, that I can pick up the phone and go, okay, now what were all those messages about? And now is my time to do that. But it serves no purpose for me to like have this play date and like not kind of sort of watch Ainsley play and like kind of sort of quickly type out crappy answers on my phone and be frustrated and be frustrated and be frustrated with her and frustrated that. And then I go home and at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, I'm a shitty mom. That just sucked. How about I just play with Ainsley and I just enjoy that for an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half. It's not that big of a deal. Look at your kid for an hour and a half, okay? She's going to sleep. I know this. It's a time block. Ainsley naps. It's a, it's a time block. She has to. So she sleeps. Now I'm be like, I'm going to be a badass coach and I'm going to pay attention to my coaches, to my clients, to my customers. I'm going to give them the right link, not the wrong one that confuses them and makes everybody frustrated. Now they sign up with the wrong person. And, oh! Instead of having this like nightmare all the time, I'm just sitting here. I have, I have everything I need. My personal development books are here. I have a lovely smelling candle. I've got my water. I've got all the resources I have at my fingertips. Now I can work and I can answer questions. And then at 2.45, I stop. I get up, I get more water, I stretch, I do some big movements. I go upside down for a little bit. 
And then at three, my kids walk through the door and I'm mom again. You've just got to build those transitions into your day and just know that if you just stick to the time box, that your brain will be, it'll have blocks too. And you'll never feel guilty anymore. You won't go to bed at night going, I'm a really crappy mom. Are you going to have crappy days? And are there days where you're just going to not want to watch your kid? Of course. Are there days when you're just not going to want to feel like coaching? Of course. But you're just going to do it anyways. Because the big thing with time blocking and being a coach and doing all the amazing things that you guys do every single day and every single week is that when you do today what others won't do in five years, you will be able to do what others can't do. And it's not because you're any better than them. It's not because of luck. And it's not because you knew the secret sauce. It's because you did what they wouldn't do. And it's not hard. Time blocking is not hard. Any tips that you hear from any top coach, they're not hard. They're so easy, in fact, that most people go, oh, well, I've heard that before. I know that. And then they don't do it. And because they don't do it, they don't get it. But if you just do the simple tips like showing up, like time blocking, you're taking five minutes. How long did it actually take to make the blocks? Five minutes? Take five minutes and block out your week. Five minutes. And in five years, you'll have all this white space and you'll be like, you'll be meeting with a high performance coach to go, I have too much white space in my life. I need more to do. <laughs> what? Yeah, because you have so much free time. You're like, I just, I don't know what I should do. <laughs> and it's a wonderful problem to have. Would you love to have that problem? Yeah. I go off on tangents. I'm sorry, I warned you. And then when I'm tired, I really go off on tangents. It's really funny. My husband and I are hilarious when we're tired because he like half falls asleep and like snores while he talks. And I tend to ramble when I'm really tired. So I'm like, blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay, now we make quite a pair. Other questions? Are you super excited about time blocking? Are you ready to own your life? <laughs> Seriously, this is, this is what this is. This is, you, I, moms, women, I'm talking to you right now. I know you're control freaks. That's why you want to do everything yourself. I'm giving you the power to, to own your time. You own it. You're in control of your time. You are in control of what your day, your flow, your productivity looks like. All you have to do is apply it. Again and again and again. And then it just gets easier. Y'all excited? I have a question. Yeah. Um, Who is it? Oh, there, Alyssa, good. Are you primarily talking Monday through Friday? Do you do time blocking on the weekends at all? Um, so, yes and no. Um, yes, yes. There's just, I leave a lot, even more white space on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, um, I time block, like, my kid time. like. My kids are in athletics and stuff. And so um, it's important to me that obviously I know, like for me, like I'm total boy mom, love it. Like my son plays football, basketball, baseball. Like I'm there. And when I'm there, I am there. Like I have my phone on airplane so I can take all kinds of pictures, but I'm not getting any notifications. Like I'm there. So that's time blocked out. Um, we don't have date nights on the weekends anymore because it's during the week because my husband works a weird job. But, like, we used to have weekend date nights. So that would be time blocked. I don't answer stuff when I'm on, uh, on date night either. And, in fact, the babysitter has my husband's phone and my phone stays home because we just don't even want it to be a temptation for me to blah. And then, um, Again, I guess because I've been doing it so long, it's just like such a generality for me. Like I know on Sundays, like I'm going to, like we're going to finish up laundry. That's a team project at my house. I don't do it alone, but we're going to finish laundry. We're going to, you know, do some meal prep, maybe some grocery shop, but like, I don't know. I wasn't, you know, we just kind of divide and conquer when it comes to that thing. And I just kind of know that. So it's, I mean, that's kind of a vague answer. Yes. Ish. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah. Do you um, 
Do you have both your power hours on Saturdays and Sundays? No. No. I do work on the weekends, work on the weekends, but um, a lot of the work on the weekends, I'm not, I'm definitely not as disciplined on Saturday and Sunday as I am during the week. During the week, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like the power hour Nazi. Like I do it exactly the way it's supposed to be done. Saturday and Sunday is more like check in with my challenge groups. If people have questions now, Sunday nights, I tend to have a power hour because if um, it's towards the end of the month and I'm getting ready for a new month and I'm running an ad, you know, like Sunday night's the best time to run an ad or talk about an upcoming challenge group because it's just that's when people are online getting ready for the week. Um, but yeah, my I don't I don't do my traditional power hours. You definitely could because technically. Um, that's what you should be doing. If, if you have free time, I'm just not as, I'm, I'm not, I'm openly admitting I'm not that disciplined. <laughs> yeah. I find it harder on the weekends, even though I have more time. I, yeah. I think it's uh, more of a mindset thing though, too. Like I'm, my mind is not there. Yeah. I mean, and I think answering challenge group questions is easy, but I'm not necessarily in like sales mode or like, I don't really particularly care to hold office hours. Um, pretty much from like 9 a.m. on Saturday till probably 6 or 7 p.m. on Sunday, I'm pretty well unplugged, more or less. If I happen to, like, everybody's, like, napping or doing, like, if all, like, the boys are playing video games and Ainsley's napping and my husband's playing video games with the kids, I might hop online and pop out a power hour because I feel like it, but it's, it's my choice, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, do I micro time block within your power hours? Um, uh, I do for my beach body power hours. Cause I think it's, you know, like, especially when, well, I'm five years into this. So not especially when you're new forever and ever and ever <laughs> it's, you need accountability with what you're supposed to do in that power hour. So I do micromanage that, but I will say that I, um, like an example, if you, Let's just say you put into your schedule, find location for upcoming special event and you give yourself 30 minutes. And let's just say you spend the whole 30 minutes finding the freaking number for the stupid place that you want to hold the dang event, right? That's what you're saying at that point. You're like, oh, and your 30 minutes is up. You're like, I suck. Time blocking doesn't work. Wah. That's really not the best utilization, right, of a time block. So to a certain degree, being a little bit vague sometimes with some things can be good. How about, like, spend time planning for event for 30 minutes. That way you don't have micromanage it. Because, like, if you're like, oh, well, it's going to take me five minutes to look up the phone number, and then it's going to take me three and a half minutes to dial and get the person on the line, and then I'm going to spend seven minutes getting to know them, talking about their dog, and then booking the event, and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you could micromanage it, but that's, like, perfect world scenario, and it ain't going to happen that way. So why micromanage it that way? Now, should you have, especially when it comes to business, your job, or, or certain things, should you have, like, these things need to happen in this amount of time? Yes. Yes. There should be tasks within. That's great. But there are certain things that can be more vague. Does that help answer that question? Yeah. Um, you might also have, like, creative time written down where, you know, maybe creative time is you're creating a training or you're blogging or – Maybe you're making picture collages or flipograms or, you know, like videos, things like that. I mean, it's creative. What do you feel like doing that day? Got your hair and makeup done? Make it a YouTube day. Don't got your hair and makeup day done? Make some vlogs, right? Make sense? You still with me? Good. Micromanaging or micro time blocking. Yeah, and do and definitely do with your power hour, Jess. Share that because that is one thing where I do micromanage and I stick to it to a T because um, I need more accountability with that. Quite honestly, when it comes to the power hours, I think anywhere you need accountability, add in that micro, like specific. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Your workout's an hour and it takes you thirty minutes to walk to warm up. 
you probably need to micromanage your workout. Anything else? Good. I want updates from all of you. I want to hear how you're all doing one week from now. I want to hear how your week went. Ashley, I do. I believe in you. I would really and truly look for a whiteboard with, with white magnets. I think that that's going to be your lifesaver. Um, and then just kind of note things on your time block. Like, oh, I missed, I totally missed that in my calendar. That really needs to be a block. Or the next time someone comes with you with an opportunity, thank you for thinking of me. Let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you. And then actually check your schedule and look at your time block and be like, wow, I have like a crap ton of white space. I could totally put something in. Or, wow, I have zero white space. Where the heck is this going to fit? It's not. I've got to say no. Or I have to remove a yellow. Carbs are the first thing to go. Take a yellow. And then replan again, and replan again, and replan again. And I want you to know, just don't ever feel like a failure with your time blocking, because it's a work in progress. It's a goal, and goals are what? It's better to like have it there and have that plan and miss it by a little bit than to just be shooting blind. Okay, so it's, it's gonna take some practice. Um, but it will, it'll get easier and easier and easier. And then I, I would say two quarterly check-ins, like check in every quarter and be like, okay, listen here, there is too much J-O-B in my life. I'm going to have to cut some of those hours, right? Or whatever it is, you know, like, wow, the purples have really gotten out of hand. I'm watching five different shows right now. <laughs> Maybe I should cut back on the purples. You know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. But really, just quarterly, check in. What's working on your schedule? What do you would love and what do you want to do more of? Like, oh my gosh, this beach thing is totally rocking. I want to add some more reds. Or like, I'm really sick of doing Cub Scouts. This is stupid. My kid and I fight about it every single time. They don't want to go anymore. It's dumb. Why are we doing this? I don't know why we're doing this. How about we take it off? Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Let's not do it anymore. Blah, blah. It's gone. Now more you have more white space. And you don't have to be anxious to fill it. Just like let it be free for a while and see what things come into your life. And then if somebody comes to you with an opportunity, you have a space to put it in, right? It's amazing how time blocking works. It's so fantastic. I love it. I'm passionate about it because it works. I'll let you guys close up the call. I'm done. I'm spent. Amanda, thank you for blocking us into your mm -hmm. busy day today. It was such a pleasure. And um, I do want to check in with from all of you guys um, next Sunday. Just post in the group and let us know how it went this week. Your team call should also be a red, by the way. I didn't mention yes. that. Don't be a slave to your phone, okay? Mm -hmm. For real. Use it, um, put it in airplane mode and then set that timer too. Use that timer and when your time is up, move on. Because chances are you're gonna get burnt out anyways on whatever you're doing if you're doing it for much more than 45 minutes to an hour. So that phone could be a wonderful thing. Just make sure you're using airplane mode. <laughs> Use it as a phone. All right, thank you, Amanda. That was great. One thing thank that- you that um, I did was I used to have all the Facebook notifications popping up and like the first thing I did in the morning and I, I know you you're, you have good tips on this too is to not look at my phone. So I shut them all off and like I usually, not right now I'm posting my three power words of the day right when I get up in the morning but I do not go onto Facebook. I do not check it until my power hour at 11 o'clock. Um, but just taking the going into that and taking off all the social media notifications has been helpful just so I don't feel so anxious to check in in all of the groups. Um, so it's like, I don't even know. I'm like, Oh, no one's even on Facebook. But when I go on, there's like a hundred and some notifications, which then I deal with during my power hour strategically, but making sure I'm hitting on my stuff first. So I'm taking doing that as well. 
So, did you guys find that app that Melissa had mentioned that blocks all your Facebook notifications while you're on Facebook? <gasps> no, I didn't look for it. Yeah, I have it. I'll repost it tonight. Or no, I'm not gonna. I lied. I'm not doing it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> Because I'm not going to have time to do it till the afternoon. But tomorrow afternoon, I'll share with the VIPs and you guys can share with your team. But there's a, there's a Facebook app thing that you can put on when you're on Facebook. So where Facebook gives you no notifications. So if you're there to work, you don't get any of those blinging like, Wah! somebody liked my photo. Yay. No. <laughs> Someone tagged you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, thank you. Great information. I like how you put it into the 21 day fix categories. That's, that's effective. <laughs> thank you. No thank oranges you. for you. I don't know. We got to come up with an orange. <laughs> oh, I didn't give you any greens either. Hmm. We need our veggies. You do need your veggies. Maybe you can make a special category for personal development. That would be my veggies if I had to choose. Okay. Yeah. Some different colors on there too. So, well, thank you, Amanda. Yes. Yeah, thanks, guys. And I, I did record, so I'll get you the recording tomorrow too. Okay. Thank you.